Hi, I'm C1C Taylor Fritz, and I'm going to be doing a presentation on intelligent tutoring systems and adaptive learning. I'm more focused on the intelligent tutoring systems as it's more interesting to me, and I saw a lot more research projects as far as that topic. Um, this is a presentation for BSci 471. Um, and all right, so what is it? Um, it's a completely autonomous computer system. Uh, that aims to provide immediate and customized instructions uh, or feedback to learners. Uh, one of the interesting things is that it does this without requiring anything from a human t teacher. Uh, intelligent tutoring systems are also known as ITSs, um, and they all have the common goal of uh, having meaningful learning uh, used in both a professional setting and it has minimal error as far as the tutoring goes. What we, when we dive into the actual analysis of, of it, you'll see that the errors or the downsides of ITS is the lack of interaction between humans. Um, there's a big crossover between intelligent tutoring and cognitive learning theory, which I didn't dive too deeply into. However, it just kind of talks about how cognitive learning theory is a little bit different than intelligent tutoring because it doesn't really have the computer base behind it, but more of the idea. Um, so maybe in another research topic, you can dive more into cognitive learning theory. Um, the ITS gives the benefits of in-person tutoring with the effectiveness of a computer-based intelligence and rigor. So think about all of your computer programs and then think about how many issues are with them and you'll see that there's really not that many compared to the issues that you may have with a human teacher. Um, going through my notes. Uh, so going kind of into the history of ITS, like after the implement implementation of initial ITS, more researchers created a number of ITS for different students because what they were finding was that ITS was having a really hard time changing for different people. So that was kind of became the focus of the field in general. Um, modern day ITSs try to replicate the role of a teacher or teaching assistant and they automate uh, pedagogical functions such as problem generation, problem selection, feedback generation. Uh, but given a current shift towards blended learning models with the COVID concerns, recent work on ITS has begun focusing on ways these systems can leverage the complementary strengths of human-led instruction from a teacher or peer when used in co-located -loc classrooms or other social contexts. Now that we're doing so much of this hybrid, maybe you're in class, maybe you're doing it online, there's this really big need for having an effective way of learning that can be distanced uh, without the need for human interaction. And what you'll see as we go into this research that a lot of the issues that arise are because computers cannot be humans and it's kind of trying to get over that hump to figure out how we can change that. So some examples of the systems that use it, um, these are kind of the four big ones. Uh, the biggest one is the Cognitive Tutor. Um, this was introduced by Carnegie Mellon University. Um, and it's a system that's been developed in several levels of math and science um, for schools across the United States. Uh, it, it's also used not just at the collegiate level, but also in secondary school. So um, the cognitive tutor helps students improve their understanding of gene interaction and regulation as far as biology. So this was a idea brought up by a university and it was kind of developed with more private sector uh, research which made it turned it into a decent program for students to use. Uh, the e-teacher is an intelligent agent so not necessarily a program uh, but it's more like a personalized tutor that supports personalized e-learning assistance so it builds what's interesting about them is they build student profiles while observing the student performance in online courses. So it uses the information from the student's performance to suggest personalized courses of action designed to assist their learning process. So it kind of goes into what we were talking about, about how it personalizes it for the student, because not every student is going to learn the same. 
Uh, Assistance is a free online program uh, developed at the Worcester Polytechnic Institute that just tutors students in various subjects. It's not very personalized. It's really just videos that you click on to learn from. Um, so it doesn't go through your trends. It doesn't analyze how you're doing in certain classes. So it's not necessarily a great tutoring section, but it's, it's useful to help learn. And then finally, the Real P program. It was designed to help students uh, enhance their reading comprehension by providing reader-specific lexical practice and offering personalized practice with authentic reading materials gathered from the web. So the Real P is, it's not an all-inclusive tutoring where, you know, I come to you with a problem and you can help me. It's really specified on reading itself. The system automatically builds a user model, so kind of like the e-teacher program, to, according to the student's performance. And then after the reading, the student is given a series of exercises based on the target vocabulary found in reading. So it's not necessarily in real time where I do something, I get feedback on it, and then they coach me. It's I do something, and then they kind of give me this personalized set of courses that can help me in the issues that they're seeing. So this is from uh, one of the sources, uh, the main human factor concerns. So these are what popped up when I kept looking up what are the issues that come with ITS. And so one through seven, uh, one, it's, a diffi it's difficult to assess the effectiveness of ITS programs because how often do you actually fill out the feedback form accurately? How often, uh, depending on whether or not you just drop it, whether it's free, whether you have to pay for it, it, it's very hard to assess how useful it actually is versus if it's the ITS or if it's just because they are going and learning new things via a different program. Um, immediate feedback and hint sequences fail to develop deep learning in students. So this goes back to kind of like our collegiate level, you know, are you actually learning the material or are you just learning it for the test? So immediate feedback, hint sequences, you know, it, it, it gives us, basically spoon feeds us the right answer so that we feel like we're learning something, but then when we're tested on it weeks from now, we probably won't remember it. Uh, number three, systems fail to ask questions of students which might explain their actions. Number four, the implementation of ITSs might be difficult to justify to an administrative staff. So this was obviously a set of concerns that was taken before coronavirus because now that we are so dedicated to online learning environments, it's not really, we don't need to justify it to administrative staff. We more have to justify why we shouldn't be using an online uh, tutoring source. Evaluation of an intelligent tutoring system is often difficult, costly, and time consuming. So one of the sources that I, one of the programs that I told you about was a free program. And it's very, very hard to have reliable research done about an individual model if there is no cost. So I would urge you, if you were looking into this, to be looking more into the programs that you pay for because generally those are going to actually build an individual model. They're going to personalize it. They're going to make it so that you actually learn things as according to your course load. Number six, human tutors are currently better able to provide appropriate dialogue and feedback and human tutors are currently better able to interpret and adapt to different emotional states. So human factors, this is huge because you're interacting with a system that is not able to really give you the same feedback, the same verbal cues, auditory cues that a computer system can do or that a human can do. So really the importance switches from, you know, am I learning to am I learning effectively? So we need to figure out how we can develop technology that will give us the same benefit of human interaction without needing that middleman of the human. Uh, so going into two human factors research studies, there's really very little research done in this field as it's a very new technology and it, now that it's being more important, I think more effort is being put into the analysis of it. But I did find two articles uh, which determined the effectiveness of ITS. Um, so it's not necessarily specifically talking about the human factor side of it, but it does discuss um, kind of what ITS does and the effectiveness of it. So source one was comparison 
of synergistic intelligent tutoring systems with human uh, physiological response. So this really discusses the benefits of ITS and talks about the disconnect between real humans and computer systems, which we already touched on. Um, however, the key point was that ITSs really have an inability to alter tutoring based on visual and verbal cues from the user. You know, when you're in an in-person tutoring session, the teacher can see if you're engaged. The teacher can see how you're, you know, by visual cues and verbal cues can kind of see where you're comfortable, where you're uncomfortable. And we just don't have the technology to do that in today's age. Uh, source two was an intelligent tutoring system lesson learned. Uh, and this is more of a military analysis of the systems. Uh, the Army put in a lot of effort to have an ITS system with the expectation that their soldiers are going to become much more reliable and much more useful. And their key point was really saying that technology isn't adaptive enough to human needs and the expectation for this high quality, high quality results is way too high because we don't have the technology in this day and age to actually have an effective mode of ITS. Um, so going into why is it beneficial, uh, you know, intelligent tutoring systems can be available at any time of the day, uh, late at night before an exam, early in the morning when you can't go to sleep. Um, so that's definitely a benefit. They provide real-time data to instructors and developers um, looking into refined teaching methods. Uh, but that kind of goes back into saying, you know, those quick hints, those verbal cues, those visual cues, which kind of spoon feed the answer. Is it really teaching you the subject or is it just teaching you how to get to the right answer? Um, number three, it reduces the dependence on human resources, which nowadays is so important with the COVID concerns. So kind of learning from that. Number four, it helps students better understand material by allowing them to first explain what they know, then by catering responses accordingly. And that's kind of iffy because, you know, you can take a quiz at the very beginning to find out what your base knowledge is, and then it'll uh, change your material to help you in the sections that you need. But, you know, how often do you actually put in the correct answers? How often are you fully engaged on those quizzes? How often are you having quizzes so that you can gauge the user's response? Uh, number five, uh, it affords educators the opportunity to create individualized programs due to the personalized nature. Going back into it, is it really personalized? If you don't have the money to do a full analysis on your model of the individual, is it individualized? And I don't think it is. Um, number six, it yields higher test scores than traditional systems. Um, and that's going back to, are you learning it or are you figuring out what the right answer is based off of cues? So yes, it does have higher test scores than traditional systems online, but is it actually better than traditional systems in person? And then number seven, it provides immediate yes or no feedback, um, individual task selection, on-demand hints, and support for mastery learning. So that's going into the human factor side, you know, um, visual cues, verbal cues, auditory cues, telling you when you're right, when you're wrong, what you need to work on. That definitely helps the user learn more about the subject they're trying to learn. Um, that's about it for my presentation. These are my sources that I used. Um, the biggest thing is that, you know, ITS is such a new technology that there's not a lot of human factors research on it. However, now that with the COVID concerns, I, I do believe that we're going to see a more in-depth analysis going into this subject as we go farther into a dependence on the uh, cyber and distance learning model. Uh, thank you so much, sir. I uh, am excited to finish the year off. Thank you.